Welcome to Pop Point O with Brian Chaffin and John Keith. Mm, that is a sexy, sexy intro. Today is Thursday, May 11th, 2017. And believe it or not, this is still a podcast, a video podcast, even for the Mac Observer. I am Brian Chaffin, editor in chief, co founder, and dude for DMO. And I am. Froggy went and Corton, he did ride Crembone. Froggy went and Corton, he did ride Crembone. Froggy went and Corton, he did ride Sword and Pistol by his side, Crembone. Or John. Wow. Wow. Now, we weren't here last week because, now, you may find this surprising too, John was sick, and John is still ill, but he is being a trooper, and he's here anyway. Well, thank you. One, I thought for sure you were going to go for the obvious. And uh, sick in the head is not as per, as per usual. Sick in the throat. <laughs> um, with a bit of the flu. Um, well, so I apologize for my voice. Um, just keep in mind that if at any point you lose a, you lose your voice, I'm just going to, I'm going to, oops, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to... Uh, just do this and like start putting words in your mouth. Oh, hello. Oh, Brian is great. Oh, Brian is right. I bow down to Brian's <laughs> wisdom because Brian is correct. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, if you lose, <coughs> if you lose your voice, Sorry. just know that I've got your back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's funny. My laugh is <clears throat> I have no upper register whatsoever. And um, Walt had this great, for me, mental visual. If you ever seen one of those old cartoons where there's like a dragon and the dragon gets, you know, a seltzer water in his throat and then he can't light his fire and there's just yep. a little poof that comes yep. out. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, anyway, but it's good to be back. It's good to see you. Yeah, uh, it's good to get to talk to you. I always look forward to it. Um, and um as always we have three topics then we're lying um topic mm -hmm. <laughs> topic <laughs> number one is uh a tale of two failures brian uh bomber versus cook then topic two is also a tale of two failures um the surface laptop versus the macbook and then topic three is apple a tax hero or a tax goat and okay. um, let's let's get it going. So the, the right. first the first um, article uh, the first topic I think you should run with uh, for two reasons. My voice is garbage, and two, you wrote a nice article um, about it. Well, and what's that? It <laughs> it's the bomber versus cook. Oh yeah, cook, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was over at the uh, um, Alpha Seeking Alpha. Uh, and it was a piece. Let me actually get the uh, you know vaguely professional. So let me actually get the uh, get the publications and everything like that. This this uh, piece was Here, attributed. I'll, I'll, I'll show it a little bit uh, on uh, on the screen here. Hopefully people can see. And we blow it up. It was attributed to uh, the Standard Investment Company Incorporated. I don't know anything about them. But they basically argued that Tim Cook is nothing more than Steve Ballmer. He's increased the value of Apple, but he uh, he's done it all on, on the coasting on the coattails of his betters, i.e., Steve Jobs, um, and that uh, that the, the quote assessment of the new products and projects unveiled under Tim Cook reflects a lack of vision and innovation required by a successful tech company CEO, and that. Quote, in many ways, uh, Tim Cook is identical to Steve Ballmer and for the same reasons should be replaced. And I call balderdash on that. I call utter and complete balderdash on that. You can, there are plenty of things to complain about Tim Cook, starting with the fact that the company no longer ships anything. But to equate him with Steve Ballmer is to not understand what's happening at Apple and to not understand what happened at Microsoft. At Microsoft, Steve Ballmer 
he's a sales guy. He's a marketing guy, right? Tim Cook talked about this. Excuse me, what's his name? Steve Jobs talked about this. And he 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 did what every sales guy does. He protects. Oh, here, let me play the video. I can play that video. All right, let's do it. Uh, so everyone knows what you're talking about. I think it's very, it's very uh, apropos. All right, uh, hopefully this will work. Show us. Yeah. So, um, and it's good that they showed us because the, the technology crashed and burned at Xerox. And what? They used to call the, what's that? No, I was just. Why? Yeah, why? Oh, very, I actually thought a lot about that. And uh, I, I learned more about that with John Scully later on. And I, I think I understand it now pretty well. What happens is, like with John Scully, um, John came from PepsiCo, and they, they at most would change their product, you know, once every 10 years. I mean, to them, a new product was like a new size bottle, right? So if you were a product person, you couldn't change the course of that company very much. So who influenced the success of PepsiCo? The sales and marketing people. Therefore, they were the ones that got promoted, and therefore, they were the ones that ran the company. Well. For PepsiCo, that might have been okay, but it turns out the same thing can happen in technology companies that get, get monopolies, like, oh, IBM and Xerox. If you were a product person at IBM or Xerox, so you make a better copy or a better computer, so what? When you have a monopoly market share, the company's not any more successful. So the people that can make the company more successful are sales and marketing people and they end up running the companies. And the product people get driven out of the decision-making forums. And the companies forget what it means to make great products. It sort of the product sensibility and the, the product genius that brought them to, the, to that monopolistic position gets rotted out by people running these companies who have no conception of a good product versus a bad product. They have no conception of the craftsmanship that's required to take a good idea and turn it into a good product. And they really have no feeling in their hearts, usually, about wanting to really help the customers. Yeah, that's somewhat relevant, right? And Yeah, it's somewhat relevant. And um, he, uh, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the last time he said that. He, he spoke about that often. Uh, I think he aimed some of that at the, uh, who is that SAP, SAP uh, bean counter that took over HP? That was just just a catastrophically bad um, CEO, um, even worse than uh, Carly Fiorina, and uh, and then he was certainly aiming that at Steve Ballmer too later on. But he 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 spoke on this topic on, on numerous occasions um, that I remember. And the whole idea is that sales and marketing people look to build and protect the cash cow. We saw that at Microsoft specifically when they killed and I forget the name of it. They killed. Um, uh, a tablet product. Do you remember the tablet product that opened up like a book, had two screens and it, in it, in it, right. Right. Yep. It was interesting, right? It, maybe it would have been, maybe it would have sucked, but it was interesting. But Steve Ballmer killed it because it threatened windows because windows is the only thing that mattered because windows was the thing that was bringing in the money. And it was just incredibly short sighted and, and fucking stupid. And Steve Ballmer was a sales guy at Microsoft. Yeah. He was, he was a sales guy. He was, was a sales so guy. That that interview with Jobs was, I think, for the Smithsonian, and this that's while he was still at Nexa. This was like ninety five or ninety four, ninety five, yeah. Um, and so it was pretty prescient, um, and and on the money about that. So uh, anyway, I think I think I think he nailed it with regard to what happened with Microsoft. They kind of achieved a monopolistic position, and um, the people that were, that were moving the dial um, uh, while the and the person that inherited the earth was a sales guy was bomber. Okay. So then let's look at, at what Tim cook has done. Tim cook has turned Apple. So under bomber, Microsoft did become more profitable and their sales rose. Right. And, and that was the, that was the sort of excuse that, you know, bomber looked at that, at, at those results. And, you know, the board looked at those results and they didn't care about the fact that their entire future had been, you know, sold at a garage sale, or not even sold really, just, you know, like put, 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 put away, put out in a, um, uh, put out in a, uh, uh, you know, to, to pasture somewhere. And now, of course, we see Satya Nadella, who was not a sales guy, and uh, he was a product guy, and he is, in fact, doing very interesting things at Microsoft. So let's look at Apple. 
Apple has become even more profitable under Tim Cook. So from that standpoint, there's a, there is a comparison to Steve Ballmer. The thing is, is that Tim Cook is not a sales guy. He's, a, he's, a, he's an operations guy. And you said to me when we were talking about this, um, um, uh, you, you, helped, uh, you helped me work on the, on the piece that I wrote. And you were saying that uh, an operations guy theoretically has a little more respect for the product. I, I, I'm going to take that a lot further, and I'm going to argue that Tim Cook, it, it, the problem isn't that Tim Cook doesn't um, have a lack of vision. It's that his, envis- his vision seems to be focused entirely on these moonshot products. Uh, life-changing, world-changing health stuff, a car possibly, augmented uh, re- uh, reality, robotics, all the stuff that they're doing with the environment. Uh, he, he has his vision f- focused everywhere but their existing products. He's like, in the piece I said, he's the anti-Steve Ballmer, right? He's not propping up legacy products to, to, to maintain the cash cow. He's letting the, pro- the legacy products go while he focuses on building all these future products. And that's my beef with him, but you can't compare him to Steve Ballmer. Well, I, I think you can compare him to Steve Ballmer, but one thing I want to show is, uh, first of all, the, the piece that you got this from was Seeking Alpha. First off, fuck Seeking Alpha up the ass. It's a piece of shit cunt publication that is a hit whore bastion of shit. Um, part of their thesis and argument for why Tim Cook sucks is that the Apple Watch failed. Uh, let me, let me, uh, and you know, here, here's, here's the part where they're like the Apple watch many reasons for failure. So, um, I think I've been quite clear that I think that the Apple watch is mostly a useless piece of shit product, but let's dispel the, the myth that it is a failure because every other wearable on earth has just been outsold by this very expensive Apple watch wearable. So everybody would love to fail the way that Apple's failed at the fucking Apple Watch. The only person that would make this statement is a hit whore piece of shit cunt writer for a publication like Seeking Alpha that can go fuck itself because they're full of piece of shit, slanted, jaundiced things like this to just fucking bait every dumb fuck in to look at these fucking articles. So fuck I'm, them. I'm, I'm I wouldn't even unclear. look at those cunts. I'm a little unclear as to what you think about this particular uh, publication. Yeah, it's it's only the most successful wearable like ever. Plus, it has the highest fucking margin and revenues and market share. So, by every fucking measure, it's Dude, a fucking out of the park success. You are so you are so the the you're so like no like I can bitch about my girlfriend, but but you better not bitch about my girlfriend. That's like that's like so you in a nutshell. You, well, you, you come to Apple's defense when anyone uh, criticizes the guy. Actually. A, to be fair, usually when someone is erroneously criticizing the company, but you, <laughs> you like rant and rave about Apple Watch. I mean, so you you rant, rant about it. Well, like like I said, uh, I think I, I I rant about it for other reasons, which is the usefulness of this. It's mostly fucking useless. Um, and the um, uh, the question of whether it's a success. Or, look, the Pet Rock was a fucking useless product, but it was a massive success. They're two fucking different things. To call this a failure is just intellectually and actually objectively dishonest. It's measurably dishonest. It's the most successful product in its category, in the history of the fucking category. How the fuck is that a failure? Everyone wants to fail this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet that cunt in Seeking Alpha wrote it in fucking black and white that it's a failure. Like every other thoughtless piece of shit cunt pundit. So I'm not above or b- below criticism, Apple. I just think it, it needs to be intelligent. And there's a f- just a fucking dearth of that in this fucking area because the entire industry is just built around being fucking click whores. Um, and Seeking Alpha is a particular piece of shit bastion of that. So fuck them all and whoever the piece of shit was that wrote that fucking article, dumb cunt. Um, so um, I, uh, I started th- that ran off with, I disagree with you. And I think they are comparable at a high level. Um, Balmer and um, not only Balmer and Cook are comparable, but Scully and Balmer and Cook are comparable. They're, they're, um, B- Scully and Balmer, I would agree with you. Agree with you. They're they're both they both made some of this the same mistakes 
at their companies, but, but, but those aren't Tim Cook's mistakes. If you want to make the argument that, that Tim Cook has got to go fine, make that argument, but don't do it by, by, by comparing and bearing 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 and. Wow. That, that was our max headroom moment. Are you still there? We are having a technical difficulty. I'm going to start doing a shot, soft shoe dance here, folks. Yep, I'm back. All right. Sorry about that. I think I lost. Let's give it a second just to rebuffer. And uh, thank goodness I didn't have to do another show tune. <laughs> Because I, I may have depleted my entire repertoire <laughs> in the show opening. Can you can you see me properly? I see your your face is frozen. I hear you. Your face is still frozen. All righty. Check one. Check two. Check. You are now a nondescript person check. icon. Oh. How about now? How about now? There you are. Yeah, that's with the wrong camera. So let me back to the correct camera. And how about now? Check one, check two. You handsome devil. All righty. That's fantastic. All right. We're All back. Right. You were in the middle of a rant, and I had nothing to do with you being shut off because I personally liked it. <laughs> in <the rant. laughs> I'm. It, it, <laughs> I don't think there's any comparison between uh, between Tim Cook. You, if you want to make the case to get rid of Tim Cook, make the case to get rid of Tim Cook. But don't make that don't hinge that case on him being just the same as Scully and Bomber, because those two did make very similar mistakes. They protected the cash cow. That's not Tim's mistake. He's not protecting the cash cow. He's he's essentially ignoring. He's 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 keeping one cash cow going, ignoring some other cash cows, and really focusing on the future. And that's just so different than the mistakes that Scully and Balmer made. So I, I was in the middle of saying why I think that there's some similarity, and that 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 was your trigger apparently. So <laughs> I'm gonna go back and try. I'm gonna go back and try to to say why I think there is at least a high level similarity between all three. And all three were given um, a company by the founder in one, for, in one way or another. And um, with a very successful um, core set of products that were bleeding edge at the time that they were gifted the company. And all of them in some way stagnated the company after milking the companies for record profits scully had record profits at the time way higher than when jobs was uh was at the helm before jobs was fired um cook now is definitely you know the, the company is the highest value company in the history of the world and um balmer at his time too was very successful on the product uh um, on on the sales side but um i agree with you and uh, uh, the you know the the differences then start to to emerge more than the similarities. So I well, see why yeah, there's. I vehemently agree with you on on that. What you, on what you just said, you're entirely accurate. Right, and I and I think I think that's the knee jerk for at a high level that people see that like it, it's kind of the story of of the of the of the father that you know toiled and worked and 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 got his hands dirty and bloody and then gave it to his kid who just ran you know the the the. The, the state and the all the all the stuff that was bequeathed to him into the ground afterwards that there's a bit of that tale there and people are trying to fit that narrative but they're very different um for one uh, like job jobs was particularly scornful of of uh from that video you could hear of salespeople running the companies like they consider a new product to be a new bottle size i'm not sure how much more disdain he could have shown there without spitting on the interviewer and uh you're muted if you're trying to talk, Brian. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, that's not the only time you said that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm sure he said it more times. I mean, I'm just, uh, yeah, with, I'm with saying that, that he he believed that he did, in fact, believe this vehemently. Is is what I'm trying to say. 
right? So, um, and, and the fact that you know Bomber is a salesperson and Cook is a is a is a um, operations person, they're different right there from the start. Um, because an operations person has at least some ability to understand the difficulty of product, and Cook, I think maybe almost to a fault, has given lots of power to product people to try to continue on with products of vision, uh, whether or not that succeeded or not. And I think you were way overly generous, like um, giving Apple credit for going green. That's not a product. That's a that's a philosophy the company may take, but it's I'm certainly not a the, product. I'm saying that's where his that's where his vision is. Well, that's a shitty vision for a product because it's a non-product. Well, um, it's not a product. It's giving, what the company is doing, and they're, they're they're and and it's it's incredible what they're doing too. Right, but how you operate green is not releasing a product, and that's what Apple. I think part of its greatness was always the focus on the product. Um, and so while it's laudable and I think it's fantastic that they do all the green stuff, it's not a product. So I don't fucking care at the end of the day with regard to what the company is doing as far as its output, that it's has a nice footprint while it's doing it. It's non output is great, but I, I'm not giving him credit in any way as being a product visionary for that. That's got nothing to do with product, nor does putting fucking green trees in, in, uh, in Apple stores. All right. So uh, listen, li yeah. listen, you, you're, you're misunderstanding me and, and it's pissing me off enough that I'm going to interject. What I'm saying is that Tim cook, his vision is in making Apple a substantially different company than it is today. The green technology stuff is just one aspect of it. And it's actually an aspect that I think that Steve jobs would have been just as focused on, um, uh, as they got more and more money, but I could be wrong. Uh, but that's my gut feeling. I think that Steve always supported the stuff, the green stuff that Tim was uh, doing before, when, when he was still with us. But again, I don't know. Can't speak for him. Not my, not me, uh, you know, I can't speak for him. Tim's focus is in making Apple a bigger, vastly more important, much more, much different company than just a computer or even just a computer and, and, uh, uh, iPod maker, or even just a computer and and an iPhone maker. He is transforming this company into something bigger. And in the process, letting go of the things that we care about today, letting those things go in it, then that's pissing us both off. But I, I think that that the, the green technology stuff is part of that transformation. And I think that that, that if you look at Apple as the product, that 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 that, that, that it does that, that, that my that backs up what I'm saying. We we fundamentally disagree on that point. If Apple produces zero products and is the greenest, most whatever wonderful operations company on earth, I really don't give a shit. Uh, it's a nice and, but it's not the meat and the substance of the company. And where, but I will give Tim Cook a little bit of credit. You know, under his stewardship, they did go with with the Apple Watch. I'm not a you know a huge fan of it, but it's a legitimate uh, accessory that that's very valuable. So was the iPod. Uh, it 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 was a it was a great you know product to add to the ecosystem, and that came out under his stewardship. The augmented reality stuff is a genuine tech product. Target whether anything comes of it, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we did. They, so they, he still needs to he still needs to prove that. That's for sure. And and so is the car stuff. So you're being a bit generous and giving him credit for that. But on the other hand, you know it, you you are I I agree with you. That he's taking big swings, it seems. They're at least letting some some voices at, at Apple take big swings, um, and it's not clear that Bomber, you know, really was doing much more than that. Um, but um, yeah, you know, other similarities though were they both had massive failures um, that were causing the decline of the companies. Now, Apple at this, you know, with Scully you saw that became very profound when there was not enough product innovation. Um, they, although interestingly, they had plenty of product iteration under Scully, right? And, 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 and later CEOs, but not innovation. So it's clearly not enough to do just one or the other. I think you have to do both. Yeah. Um, and there was, there was actually plenty of iterations of windows too. And, and office under, right, under Balmer. Right. Right. And so many of those enough. iterations were bad, but so were many of Scully's uh, uh, initial iterations. Right, and so were some of Jobs and some of some of yeah, Cooks. Fair but, enough. Um, but um, and and Cook, uh, excuse me, and Balmer 
also you know had had a lot of iterations but not a lot of massive innovations uh which really started to uh, you know, massive decline market share wise, which was the sole measure of success for really for Microsoft um, on the operating system side, a total collapse in mobile uh, market share, uh, which they owned at one time. And um, even on the browser front, you know, a lot of decay in Internet Explorer uh, because it just became such a crafty piece of shit uh, with, with no clear replacement. So um, and and Cook has his failures. Cook's failures are uh different right he has which is shocking to me where he failed it is the last place i expected cook to fail which was just to get regular product iterations out um this year your article was being in my sense almost too kind uh when you said you know they had 14 products last year apple did and only this year they've only released two products because we counted the airpods for last year which i actually did get in december um so they've released two products. It's the middle of fucking May, and they've only released two products. Yeah, so again, I'm going to make this point to you. I think that it's even worse that we can go back eight months. We can go back eight months and find three products. I think that's even worse than two and five, but you know, whatever. Your one, One's mileage can certainly vary. Right. Well, it's another case of us vehemently agreeing past one another. <laughs> um, so so – um, their, their nature of their failures is very different. And what's why it's surprising to me that, that Cook failed at iteration more so than kind of this, you know, really, um, right. It seems non, like the iter non -iterative iteration, leaps. it seems like iteration is the thing that the operations, operations guys should, guy should do great. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what it, it makes me wonder if, if they're fucking up on iteration, something really weird is going on that that is going to be a story unto itself maybe years from now um but yeah i mean look even apple design which i had a rant on the previous episode in the last like three or four years apple's design group has released like one and a half things a new macbook pro which was nice and um airpods the rest of everything is basically at best you could call it an iteration it's just you know this is now the third year iteration design of the same iphone 6 the uh iteration for the iphone se is like five or six years it's crazy how long that thing hasn't been updated it's not producing at all and you would think that the design part would shouldn't be that tough for at least some aesthetic tweaks so something weird is going on there with their ability to do iteration. And I, I, I'm looking forward to finally hearing what that story is going to be because it, it just doesn't make sense. When Cook is such a really accomplished operations kind of guy, you would think that would be just par for the course for him. Hey, let me ask you this. If Apple, uh, and this is, I mean, hypothetical, it's almost a, it's almost a, a stupid question. I'm going to try. If Apple released some augmented reality product, service, device, whatever, that was useful, that was genuinely useful, would, would that make you feel more kind towards him in terms of him being a product guy? I think we briefly talked on this, and I think we were both in super agreement with one another, which is, if he came out with a genuinely new platform that was transformative, all sins would be forgiven, right? Uh, for me, they would. If he came out with, look, when 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 Mac OS X started not to get updated as much because they were on the long stretch to finish the iPhone, mm -hmm. the iPhone was a transformative, I, the iPad not nearly, the iPhone was transformative. It was a completely new GUI experience that they created basically all new sui generous stuff, a new way of thinking about interacting with devices. So the fact that, you know, Mac OS was delayed by half a year or a year that year, who gives a shit? The fucking release the iPhone, right? Um, and the same thing would happen like when the Mac came out. That was very transformative uh, from everything before it. So if they came out with some augmented reality thing where we, that is the best of touch and 
desktops and gives you all new abilities that we never even dreamed about. Yeah, I'd be like, whatever. You know, the fact that the Mac Pro was an update for four years, forgive it. Um, I'm still grumpy about it. I still think they should be able to chew and, you know, uh, yes. walk at the same time. But I would forgive them because there would be some amazing thing that kind of doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I don't think it. it's something that I should, st we should stop expecting of Apple, but I would, it'll be a, a question of that I wouldn't be able to help myself, but forgive them. That's a big if though. I mean, you know, that's happened in my opinion in the computer world, like two, three times, maybe where something was that big a leap. Now, if it's less of a leap than that, if it's kind of like the iPad after the iPhone kind of, you know, in my opinion, iterative uh, step, I'm going to be thinking, really, you guys, it, it sucked all your brains to produce that iteration and you couldn't chew and fucking walk straight. Uh, so it depends on the nature of it. But yeah, I agree. If it's some mind blowing thing, well, I don't know if I agree. That That's my point. I, I'm pretty, you're, you're open I know myself it. well. Yeah, I'm, I, I know myself well enough that if they do something that amazing, it'll be like all sins are forgiven. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, in the meanwhile, so I think I am uh, at still at Steve Ballmer is, or Jim, Tim Cook is no Steve Ballmer and you're at, uh, they're both the same screw. No, I mean, I, I think, I think I'm a little bit um, more on the fence than you. And like at a high level, I see the similarity. Uh, once you dig in, you're like, I, I, I think they're, they're different. The failures are different to your point. Uh, Steve Ballmer uh, was was milking the iterations, and if anything, um, you know, Tim Cook is failing completely at doing the iterations and milking, you know, what he could easily milk. So the, the nature of their failures are different. Whether or not Cook has to go, I really think if there isn't something big going on, um, if there isn't something big going on, the the failure to execute on such basic iterations in the failure to take care of the biggest core constituency of the company, the most important, I think, that exists, and to f be able to focus Apple's attention on these things is a major failure. In any other company, he would be out for far less. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. So well, I don't know. I don't know if I actually got to pull the trigger. Would I pull it? on cook to fire his ass but well, no, no, hold on if you got to pull the trigger you'd know what the hell they were working on and you'd be able to make your decision based on this bigger picture right. stuff that we don't know so i mean it's it's not it's not fair to it's not fair to you to to you know have to pull the trigger based on what we actually know oh because lack of knowledge has ever slowed me down oh uh, fair point <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fair point uh, you know and, and nor me so you know giddy up yeah so um, I, I'm very close, and and I think I get to the point where if we're past WWDC and there's not something pretty interesting coming out, if we don't see some more iterations ramping up pretty quick by the end of the year, I mean this is just an epic. Well, failure. all right, hold on, let's uh, a quick look at that. First of all, I think that the 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 thing we're going to get is the home Siri device at WWDC. Uh, I don't think we're going to get IMAX until the fall to make that a two year product cycle, which is just retarded. Um, and we're, we're not going to get a Mac Pro until at least next year because because uh, that's what Phil Schiller bluntly told us. And we could conceivably get a Mac Mini, but there's been no rumors to that effect. So I don't think we're going to need any new Macs at WWDC, but I think we're going to get this new home Siri device. Well, the other thing is at least they're finally going to update the iPhone's um, aesthetic housing it seems like i don't know we'll see um I, I i keep giving them more and more slack but at some point i'm going to pull the trigger uh and be uh, you know foaming at the mouth that he's got to go he's on that route and he should know that he's on that route and i think articles like this do serve a purpose other than me shitting on them for being the hit or cunt bags that are seeking alpha that they are um and that is there is some high level truth to this and Tim Cook should pay attention to it. And he's, ha he should have had more than enough jabs of a wake up call. Like you can't let shit like this die on, on the vines. Um, and you got to start paying attention to actually putting out product. Anyway. Um, I think, I think we bitch enough at that thing. So I, I think overall, I agree with you um, that they're, they're more dissimilar than similar other than at the very high level. 
that, you know, bequeathed unto them was the kingdom. Yep. Fair enough. All right. Topic number two is the Surface Laptop. Um, I don't know if you have any opinions on it. I'll let, I can let you go. And, and I have some opinions on it. Uh, and by the way, the, the bitch fest that's about to ensue, you could blame on Jeff because he, he poked me into doing this. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will tell you this. It is sexy, sexy, sexy looking. It is a good looking device. I love the way it looks. It's the, the, the amount of Ram is ridiculous. It, the low, uh, it's, uh, the, the, the USB three, one USB three port is even so, worse, uh, even I'm worse. Gonna, zoom yeah. in on this. So here's what it looks like. It, it's, I, I don't know about that color, man, that, that color, the, the beige, well, just, I don't that's one, that's remember one color. ever in my life wanting something to be beige, uh, not beige, burgundy. Burgundy is like the red version of beige. Yeah. Well, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you know, the subjective, uh, but it's, it is a good looking device under, under rammed and one USB three port is utterly just awful. That's just such a bad choice. At least with one USB C port, you can push a lot of stuff through it. You can't push diddly squat through a USB three port. Well, you can, but, but not really. So, so um, but you know, sexy. Uh, uh, the price is good. The um, you know, it's kind of like it's you know what that is. It's the it's the it's the, the 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 display is better than the MacBook Airs. This is the MacBook Air that Apple should have released last year with with less RAM and 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 fewer ports than it needs. Well, so I'm going to disagree with you. I, first, I thought it was kind of attractive, but then I realized it was a lot of <laughs> a lot of photography of a gray unit that you know had cat shadows because. Look at this. This looks like every other Windows uh, trapezoid piece of shit to me. Uh, the screen is extra thick, and it has to be because of the touch uh, part of the of, of the of the of the screen. It is interesting that they used uh, Alcantara <laughs> for the the keyboard. Um, th this part you could kind of see. I don't know if in this video you can see, but uh, this is Alcantara on the top, uh, which is a fancy word for polyester. Uh, that feels like suede and um, but yeah it's not as attractive as I first thought it is very uh, MacBook Airish. so um, here here's the kind of problems I have with this I, I disagree with you about the price so look what you get for 999 four gigabytes of fucking RAM are you shitting me dude four gigabytes won't even fucking run Windows 10 it's a joke it's totally unusable um, 128 gig SSD, dude, I have thumb drives fucking bigger than that. That's pathetic. <laughs> it's fucking pathetic. This is not usable even as a fucking netbook. It's a piece of shit and the processor is shit on it too. So, uh, the, then getting up to an i7, 16 gigs of RAM is what you fucking need today. Oh, and if you get 16 gigs of RAM, you have no choice. You must get the, the anemic piece of shit, 512 gig. SSD because why would someone want a one tera or a two tera SSD? Why would we give them that? Oh, and the price for this piece of shit to make it marginally useful, twenty two hundred fucking dollars. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? And the press is going on. This is amazing. This is what Apple should have done. And Apple, when they release this kind of shit, people are like, oh, it's too expensive. So I configured Apple's, in my opinion, equivalent piece of shit, which is their MacBook which is also useless in every configuration. You have to get the 1.3 dual uh, core turbo. Why must you get the 1.3 core dual? Because if you do the, uh, the benchmarks on the processor, the 1.3 gigahertz is the only processor that approaches usability. It's uh, Geekbench here is 3264. If we compare that to the, wait for it, four year old uh, 11 inch MacBook, it's basically the same speed as the four-year-old. So that's what you have to buy today to get pretty close to four-year-old fucking technology from Apple uh, because the, the MacBook uses the mobile version of the Intel processors, the, the M cores, um, which are deathly slow. So, okay, but you want this to be small, so you're willing to have the slow piece of shit processor. Well, if you're a business person, fuck you, you're getting eight gigs of RAM and liking it, and fuck you, why would you, why, even though they could put in a chip that takes the exact same space and, and voltage 
and put in one or two terabytes of storage in there, fuck you, you're just going to eat uh, 512 gigs. And even though this thing is maxed out, um, uh, it's still way cheaper, only 1750 and way more portable than um, than the Microsoft piece of shit. You'd have to compare it, uh, the, uh, the Microsoft one to the MacBook Air, and the MacBook Air is still going to be way cheaper for a more decently configured one. But at least I have an excuse for Apple having the MacBook Air. It's just neglect because Apple doesn't give a fuck about releasing products, right? Fuck you. You'll eat this three-year-old piece of shit MacBook Air that we haven't updated. And you'll like it. So fuck yourself. But at least they have the excuse of fucking neglect. Criminal neglect, in my opinion, but neglect. Microsoft so sh doesn't look for where the puck is going. They look for where the fucking puck was three fucking years ago to copy Apple. Release a product that matches Apple's three-year-ago fucking design and still made it more expensive. And yet the fucking press, the fucking cunts in the press are like, this is the next coming. Microsoft has really showed itself. No, this is the most fucking pathetic piece of overpriced shit with fucking goddamn polyester fur on it that I've ever fucking seen. And yet all the cons that have been sucking Microsoft dick for apparently a good payoff, I hope it was worth it, are like, oh, this is fantastic. Apple needs to be worried that it doesn't, that this competes so well with their three-year-old fucking neglected device. Fuck everyone. Fucking idiots. So that's my opinion on the fucking Surface book. Everyone could go fuck themselves. It's a piece of shit that's overpriced. I think it looks good shit. though. Well, you, you, you're Mr. Alcantara. <laughs> it's very Corinthian leather. Mm. Yeah, I think, it, I think it looks good. It's just, it's way underpowered. I certainly wouldn't buy it even if I was a Windows person. And I know that I'm you're not. a secret fan of luxurious Burgundy. <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, the, so here, here's what's going to happen with this thing. Uh, people who buy the entry level model are going to be incredibly disappointed. And it's four gonna, gigs. Are you fucking kidding me? It was four Windows. fucking gigs. Right. With, yeah, Windows. with Windows fucking 10. Yeah. It's, it's people are going to be very disappointed with it and it's going to, it's going to be quickly lambasted and, um, and, but the, the, doesn't it piss you the fuck off that paid professional tech pundits couldn't do two seconds of fucking investigation to see that if you need 16 gigs of RAM with this thing, it's going to be $2,800 for this overpriced piece of shit. And no one's fucking criticized it, that they're all just like, no, 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 no give me more Microsoft cock. I can't get fucking enough cock. Oh, yeah. Just fucking jizz that all over my face. That no one's fucking outraged at this overpriced piece of shit and calling it what the fuck it is. That fucking pisses me off. It's such a fucking disservice to the fucking public that uh, reads it. It's like, oh, this is the next coming. Apple needs to be worried. Fucking click whore cunts. Fuck them all. <laughs> all right. Well, there we have it. All right. One more topic. Apple tax, tax paying. Are they a hero taxpayer or a goat taxpayer? Both. So, okay. Uh, it sounds like you've been you've been you've been preparing your your comments. So I, you want to go first? Uh, why don't you or do you want? Up, I actually. could show the article. Let me show the article and give some basic stats first. Yeah, that, that, I think that'll be useful. So an article came out in Forbes, and by the way, just as a matter of principle, fuck Forbes. Um, and uh, the article's name is uh, I'll probably link to it in the show show. What uh, what America's biggest company? taxpayers and of course you have to show trump in there for god knows what fucking reason but whatever um and what's interesting is so the corporate tax rate by the way in america is fucking retarded and the fact that america uh double taxes not just corporations but even individual citizens that pay full tax abroad is to me fucking offensive but that's another topic and show but the corporate rate is 35%. And you, amongst many, are always, wah, 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 Apple is so fucking evil. They, they, they try to minimize their tax bill. And yet, I don't see you overpaying your taxes, Brian. Dude, what? Dude. Don't even try that shit Let, with me again. And that is blah, not blah, it. Blah. You're, you were you were you were misapplying what I have said about Apple. Sure, sure, sure. Outside, outside anyway, so 
Apple is the uh, is amongst, if not the biggest taxpayer. Um, they Apple paid is 15, the biggest taxpayer in the U.S. Uh, they paid fifteen point eight billion on fifty nine billion in operating income, and that's an effective rate of twenty five point eight percent, which frankly makes me want to fire their tax lawyers because they should be doing much better. But uh, they're paying quite a quite a bit considering all the expenses that they could offset on a lot of these things. It's kind of remarkable that they're paying that higher rate. And what's interesting is, uh, and this is the rate despite the your, your famous uh, double Irish Dutch sandwich bullshit whatever thing with Ireland. Um, uh, l if you look at uh, Microsoft, um, uh, effectively pays only 16.5% instead of the 35% rate. And again, a lot of these companies have a, a very legitimate offsets and expenses and losses uh, that are going to always bring you know the rates down. Uh, Google paid 19%. Some and what what gets me is what gets me is you'll go on a rant about Apple and it's kind of like that piece of shit from NYU that had to go and investigate how tough it was working in an Apple factory and he didn't go to like the the fucking pork chop manufacturing place in China to see how people really fucking suffer in that country. No, he had to go to Apple because again he knew it would get him visibility for whatever his dumb fuck pet project is. But you look at Exxon Mobil. And they actually made 460, 406 million. They paid zero taxes uh, in the same period. And a lot of these companies pay dick uh, all uh, on taxes. Yet yeah, every fucking year, nobody pays attention that Exxon doesn't pay shit. And all these other companies don't pay shit. They got to go to Apple. Apple is so fucking horrible. Yet when you look down and you see what they paid overall, they're the biggest fucking pair in the yeah, country. Yeah, so period. can we please look at what I've actually said about Apple in the U.S.? You the said Apple that pays. Like, I, hold on, let me quote you. I'm Brian Chaffin, and I like to kill babies, and I like evil incarnate. I believe that was the direct quote. Well, that is not at all what I have said, and what I I'm have sorry, said is that Apple is straight. the biggest taxpayer in the U.S., and Apple absolutely and positively pays its pair, fair share on the national level. I don't like the fact that Apple negotiates sweetheart deals in local uh, communities, but the reality is that Apple does pay its fair share here in the US. The thing that I complain about with Apple on, on the international scale is when they aren't paying any local taxes in the areas where they're making money. That's what pisses me off. Yeah, we, we we disagree on that. We have an episode dedicated to it. So I don't I don't necessarily have to rehash it, other than to say we disagree. You just have to miss one of us me. is right and one of us is wrong. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I was I'm obviously being facetious. Uh, um, uh, I, I think you have some fair points, but we disagree on them. All right, but um, Apple is uh, uh, one more thing. This the, so now let me bitch about this fortune article. This fortune article pissed me off. It's it actually, it's, Oh, it's, it's such a cunt piece. Fuck for it's full of, uh, it's just, it's just error ridden. For instance, one of the things that they say is, uh, uh, let's see, biggest in Texas. Uh, they talk about companies bringing the money back into the U S and the, the issue here is money that has earned outside the U S and it was never in the U S. So that's just wrong. The, the entire point of this article is to talk about how tough corporations have it about how awful it is that, co that companies have to pay any taxes because all taxes are bad and government's bad and, and fuck taxes and, and, and oh my God, corporations paid for uh, a quarter of the money that uh, the United States uh, government brought in last year. And oh my God, that's just terrible. It's like, fuck that shit. Taxes pay for shit that makes shit happen. And, and ugh, I just fucking hate that bullshit attitude. And the entire pitch of this piece at Forbes is is slanted and gross and disgusting and i don't even get some of it right so, so i it's agree just with actually you on, wrong i i agree with you on on shitting on forbes and it's a piece of shit rag uh as well uh we disagree on on i, I think it's it to me it's it's morally unconscionable um that you went and paid full european taxes which by the way are probably more than 35 percent as an individual or as a corporation in many cases and now the government is going to force you to pay again to bring your own money in that you pay taxes that you earned and didn't use any american resources on because you were completely abroad and now you got to pay taxes on it but um i think i agree taxes are important and it's good to get them clear and there are too many sweetheart bullshit 
uh, kickbacks and, and loophole bolt things in, in, in them. And it, it, it seems like the scum get away with the most and, and good, honest people end up and companies end up footing more than their fair share of the weight and burden of, of what we're trying to do with those taxes. And really great tax reform is something, unfortunately, I think no politician will ever do, have the balls to do, or have the basic, I don't know, the, 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 the will to get, the will and mandate to get through um, um, ever. Uh, so I've just doomed that, that taxes will always be shit. So, I mean, it's one of those things, in theory, it's a re really good thing if done well. Unfortunately, the reality of how our tax system is today and probably tomorrow is it's it's a total shit show. Um, but anyway, I think we're we're once again vehemently arguing, agreeing past one another. Um, the uh, the only reason I um, the only reason I even brought that um, 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 article up was not for the rest of the shit, and it was just that it, it actually was one of the few places that computed the the yeah the this net, net, this actually uh, tax rates this it pisses me off when. Um, like you actually, it pisses me off when people want to hold Apple up as the poster child of some kind of abuse when it comes to uh, tax, especially in the U S actually like I'm the only one complaining about the aspect of Apple's international taxation uh, uh, scheme and, and, and strategy. I'm the only one making the argument that, that I'm making. Everyone else is either mistakenly thinks that Apple is offshoring these profits, which is not the case or that Apple is somehow dodging taxes and no one gives Apple any credit for being the largest tax holder, a uh, taxpayer in the U S uh, just like to your point, no one gives Apple credit for uh, having the best factories and paying employees the most amount of money in, in, in areas where they don't have to. And in uh, absolutely massively overshooting any kind of local requirements they have on, on uh, things like the environment, worker safety, worker education, all these various things. And instead people attack them because they can, they can get attention uh, for whatever kind of uh, agenda they're trying to, to, to meet instead of like, but to, have you noticed that Greenpeace has been consistently giving Apple props wh where they should? Yeah. That's a switch. Um, yeah. I mean, because they see they actually have a, a real direct influence with Apple. They'd be stupid to, I think, make a foe out of, out of your, one of your best friends. And, and that really does impact a lot of uh, consumables that are being made into renewables. And uh, there was this article, I forget what, fucking piece of shit wrote this article but it was um it was oh apple's folly in trying to uh have kind of a virtuous cycle of consumables right and he's like that can never be done and i'm like he may be right but he was calling him basically an idiot for trying and i'm like are you fucked up in the head I get that they'll never get to 100% because there are just some materials that are too difficult to recycle but the fact that they're going for it um it is so laudable and in the meantime you get the cons at mac fix it bitching that the fucking airpods are not serviceable are you fucking high are you do you fucking understand what the fuck technology is in that fucking piece of shit the fact that anyone could even glue that cunt together uh, any human can fucking piece that piece of shit together is a minor miracle. And he's like, well, it's not serviceable. And some of the other things like the MacBook, I agree, it's a disaster, but it's not because of the same reasons that that, that Mac Fix It's talking about. Um, the, the MacBook is, it, it's a joke because if you ever need a larger hard drive than the two terabytes you got it maxed out with, well, it's a disposable thing now because you can never upgrade it. I can, in my... 2011 macbook pro i can today put in a four terabyte ssd actually i can put in i think a 15 terabyte ssd um if i need it but apple has made getting more memory a reason to dispose of a computer which is a fucking joke for the user's benefit and for the environment's benefit too but when the, but, but that's what gets me is the fucking content mac fix it went on uh, whatever Mac Break Weekly or some other uh, podcast where they hate Macs, and yeah, fuck all those guys. They're, they're fucking Mac haters. It, it's it's fucking ludicrous that they run a show where every stay almost on everyone, target, stay on target. All right, all right, fuck them. That's my major point. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they go on the podcast to, to to thank you to 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 shit on on the fucking AirPod. It's a fucking miracle these things exist. Maybe give them a 
you know, an iteration or two before you start fucking questioning that it's not repairable. Who the fuck was expecting this fucking cut ear pod to be repairable? Do you give a fuck that these clips fucking headphones are not repairable? Who's cut fucking in the streets about this? This is like, talk about misplaced I, fucking priorities. So, uh, I, Dovetail, I, listen, your point. These, They're these, fucking criticizing the wrong are, people. These are much bigger. These, these are lovely, 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 lovely planar headphones from Blue. Um, and they're, they're, they're much bigger. Um, I don't think they're rep repairable. I don't think any set of headphones is repairable. But yet, yeah, it's, it's a point of an I mean, article for, for Mac any, Fix It. They can any, go fuck well, I like generally I, Mac I, Fix It's work. So it's with a little yeah, bit of and, and I kind, I, like, I, hesitation. But I, fuck I, them on that article. Uh, this is, you know, like how much time do we have here? I, I love Mac fix it. I love a lot of what they do. I also like their push for, uh, repairability. I'm not sure that the, the, there's a difference between a company artificially keeping you from getting into something and an, a company designing something for you not to be gotten into because that's how to actually make it as good as it can possibly be. And I think that Apple skews towards the latter, not the former. So, so I, I, maybe I was doing it poorly, but what I was trying to do was compare and contrast. So I think they did everyone a huge service with their shitting on the repairability of the new MacBook Pro. It's mm. bad for the environment because basically once you're full of the two terabytes or whatever storage size you got, that computer is now disposable. You have to fucking get a whole new machine well, because you, you could keep storage. using it with, you could keep using it. It's, it's disposable when you need to upgrade. There's a difference. Between well, when well, you when you it. It's like when you fill it up and, uh Oh, it's full. Got to Got to dispose of it. But, but well, I mean, I, I, I'm being pedantic to, to a lot of people. It, it's the same thing to some people. You, your point is valid, but the bottom line is once you need more storage, you need more storage. And the only option is going to be to get a new machine for you. You can't desolder the SSD on there and solder in a new one because that's what it is. It's soldered on. And the fact that it's a glue job to even get to the fucking battery is a disaster. So in that instance, I think they were shining a really good light. And every and if anything, not enough people are shitting on Apple for this crazy design that you can't even upgrade this, the fucking the RAM I get because maybe there's an addressability issue. But the storage, the, the fact that it's not a, a stick SSD would have cost them nothing to do other than them being cons. Um, so oh, it's, I, yeah, it's iFixit, Mac, by the way. Rick Allen is correct. I'm sorry, so iFixit. iFixit did a good too. job there. But then they contrast it and look like fucking just out of their mind lunatics on the AirPods. No one gives a fuck about the AirPods repairability. Once it's broken, you're throwing it out or asking Apple to give you a new set um, and let Apple deal with it. And they're probably going to fucking throw it in the trash because that's all you can do with something that small for now. It's good to have goals, but again, it's, it's just missing the forest for the trees and not knowing who your friends are and treating them accordingly. Um, anyway, um, one other thing I was curious about the tax thing, and I think we could put a nail in this show, as I think we've reached our rant quota. Um, <laughs> really? And I'll have really? you know. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, John. I've been saving this up. I've been saving this up. I've been saving this up now for um, uh, an incredibly long time. So... You're saying that you think we might have reached our rant quota, to which I say, and please pay attention to your screen. Really? 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 <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been saying that. Up. Oh, as you die. I've been saving that up since I got the, the Brio from Logitech and, and I realized that I could do that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That was very funny, man. That was super good. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant for the episode. You, you, you oh, are, see, your I pedanticness see. is I'm duly noted and corrected. Um, so uh, as, as you know, Brian, uh, I think, I think Apple has about 130 or to $150 billion in debt that they issued in the U S for our stock buybacks and dividends and stuff like that. And they're holding about 250 billion abroad and, uh, kind and of 220 abroad to 220 abroad. And they've got another 36 here, right? Then that's okay. right. Uh, I stand corrected. It, you know, better than me. I'm going round numbers, roughly quarter of a, a bill, right? Um, most of which is abroad. And I'm sorry, yeah, I have a trail. You're right. <laughs> and, 
And it's a lot, it's mind boggling. Uh, and um, uh, Trump uh, espouses that there, there could be a, a repatriation tax holiday of 10%. And, you know, he expects that a lot of companies would take advantage of this. And I wonder what your thoughts are, whether or not Apple would take advantage of a 10% tax holiday and repatriate all or most of the 230 bill that, that is uh, abroad. Yeah, I think a lot of companies will. Uh, same thing will happen as what happened last time is that it'll all go towards bonuses and, and shareholder dividends and buybacks and things well, like that. Well, whether or not you know it does some of the things that Trump does or not, who the heck knows because each company is its own actor. And I think you're right. Like the history shows that um, you know, it didn't achieve more jobs and stuff like that. But uh, the question is uh, just the, the high level question of whether, not whether it's good or bad is will they? So you, you think yeah, they Apple, will? Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think because, because Apple can write all this, this, this cash overseas, might as well go ahead and bring it back. Even though they're paying next to nothing on all this money that they've borrowed, uh, they can pay it off. And if they need to borrow again, they can, they'd still have money left in the bank. So uh, I think that any company, any of these multinational, these tech guys that are that are bringing in so much money, I think they'd be foolish not to. Do you so disagree? First, because I'm surprised um, you didn't even ask. I'm not sure that they would. Uh, I did a little re research that I'll show on the screen in a second, but you know, the George Bush uh, had one of these repatriation holidays. I think it was in 2004, and back then, Apple clearly not in the financial shape it did now. Um, uh, but his repatriation holiday was 5.25%, significantly lower than the 10% Trump is proposing. Um, do you think that Apple brought any back uh, then? I do not know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. I know the answer. No, no, I'm just asking you to guess. I'll, I'll show you the answer. Well, my guess only because you asked is no. So Otherwise, I would answer, have said yes. <laughs> yeah, now you're just hedging. Um, the answer no, is no, yes, no. I'm saying, I'm saying that... I'm, I'm saying that in a vacuum, I would have said yes, but because you're asking, I'm, I'm going to guess no. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. they did bring it back. They repatriated $755 million at the time. Now, I don't know if that was all the money abroad or just some of it. Um, 2004, which, Apple did have uh, billions. So then they only brought a portion of it back. And right. I kind of think, you know, if you're being just uh, purely um, – kind of a financial engineer on this, why would you? Why would you until it became roughly the cost of money for you? Because the cost of money for them is probably 3%. Um, and they can keep paying stuff off uh, kind of ad infinitum um, because they make so much money and just paying off that debt as they, as they want. And yet they don't have to pay another 10% to bring it in. And what's interesting to me is if, if you're right, that they didn't bring in all their money, even though they could have at five and a quarter, they sure as shit not going to bring in. Yeah, but there's uh, a difference between now and then. There's a difference between now okay. and then. They would, they would have needed to keep um, money overseas uh, for foreign operations. They, now they can still do that. If they brought in, say, $200 billion, they would have $20 billion overseas and they're generating another, what, you know, 10, 10 to $15 billion every quarter. Um, so they can keep doing that. But the difference is now is uh, they do eventually have to pay this debt back. These bonds do have to eventually be paid. And if they brought all that money back, they could buy a bunch of stock in a stock buyback all at one time without having to, to sweat it. So that's it, a it's a fine theory. Uh, I, I I disagree with it. This is my, it'll be interesting to see who's closer to right. Right. Um, I think they'll buy back some some token amount to kind of appease the Trump administration to some extent. Uh, to to uh, if there's 230 million outstanding there, maybe they bring back like 50 bill, uh, which. Uh, uh, I don't think they're worried about the debt, although I think they should be worried about the debt, but reasonable people would disagree with that and say that they make enough domestically to keep servicing that debt and then some. They, they could, they're, they're still generating more than what it takes to pay it off uh, domestically, so they don't have to bring in uh, that stuff. But it brings up to me, so we'll, it'll be, you may be right, maybe they bring back the, the vast bulk of it. I think they're going to go to the other end of the spectrum where they bring back not the vast bulk of it, but some more tokenish 
amount, although it's funny to talk about 50 billion as a token amount, um, but relative, I guess, to the corpus um, there. And um, I guess we'll see who's right. But you know what, what is interesting on a topic I don't hear talked about? Apple's net capital on hand has gone down significantly in the last bunch of years. I think it was up to around 160 bill or 170 bill um, clean, meaning uh, if you include payoff of the debt, right? Uh, today, if they have about 150 to 160 billion in debt, and I'm not sure what the number is, I think it's just say 150 billion, and they have roughly 250 billion in cash on hand. Well, by my math, that's only 100 billion net. It's gone well, down yeah, but, uh, but it's because they've they've done I think uh, 200 billion in stock. Uh, they're up to 220 billion on stock buybacks and uh, dividends. Uh, I think the stock buybacks are a little less than 200. Oh, and div if yeah, if you include dividends, yeah, you're probably right. It's probably more than that. But the, yeah, the buybacks are around 150 bill, which is interesting uh, because their market caps at around 800 bill and the buybacks are around 150 bill they might have actually been around a trillion dollars but for the buybacks although the price might be different but for the buybacks too so who knows well, yeah the, the buybacks um, have have up the price of the stock i think recently that's really clear the the the, the stock's on a tear i think um uh, buffett has a, a good deal to do with that but that's a conspiracy theory for another day but nonetheless i agree with you that that clearly is a big piece of it um, but it's still interesting that their net cash is only around 100, on, only around 100 billion. People keep talking about the cash on hand, but I don't know. To me, it's meaningful how much debt yeah, they, the have. Cash, they have. A very right. significant amount. Right. Yeah. They, they do have a very significant amount of debt, and I, I don't. I really think that that that. Well, I don't know. We'll see. To your point, we'll see. We we won't know until we see it. But they do have to pay that back, and they have to pay it back with money from the from the U.S. And they do need more money for investments in the US and for the stock buybacks any additional stock buy stock buybacks so I, I i do think they'll bring some back man yeah it'll be interesting anyway um unless you got something else to rant about we we've uh no we've you're a, you're a superhero for getting through the show with your voice like that uh i appreciate it and i want to thank our uh, listeners who uh hung with us uh, during the live stream we appreciate it. Appreciate the feedback. Uh, Rick Allen, we appreciate the, uh, the uh, fact checking. The Courier was the uh, notebook product, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the touch tablet. Thing That's right. That's that, right. Uh, that you, Palmer Rick. killed because he killed it because it was a threat to Windows. Because it could have been better than Windows, he killed it. Oh my God, what a Nimrod. That guy is such a Nimrod. Well, that, yeah, that's worked out on their uh, mobile play really well. Yes. Yes, it did. Who was the guy that was running that? There was like a famous guy that I think, oh, the guy that was running that was the guy that, oh, I don't know, just formed the entire Xbox division. So clearly a guy that doesn't understand products too well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, with that last bit of disgust. <laughs> by, by, yeah, by, for by this like episode. Before, for this episode. Before you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you correct me. Um, uh, yeah, with, with that. Um, why don't you say your goodbyes and I'll say mine. Bye. <laughs> and on that popular topic, thanks everybody. And sorry for my voice. Mm -hmm.